itself over the jungles of Vietnam, the A-6 intruder quickly becomes the backbone of naval air attack. Fighting day or night in all weather conditions, the A-6's durability is unmatched. 25 years later, it will wreak havoc over the sands of Iraq. Over 30 years ago, emerged one of the greatest airplanes ever to be deployed from an American aircraft carrier, the A-6 Intruder. Mission is uh, day CQ and secondary mission is uh, day flight time. Part Today, a new generation of intruder pilot prepares for a mission aboard an aircraft that was designed before most of them were born. This is Attack Squadron VA 34. V stands for fixed wing, A for attack. The men are being briefed one level below the flight deck where a flurry of activity is already underway. The planes are given final preparations as the rescue helicopter is launched. All day, it will hover next to the ship, waiting for a disaster that all hope will never come. For the naval aviator, nothing is ever routine. If the pilot gets a cold cat shot, he will have less than a second to decide whether to attempt to power out of his predicament or to leave his multi-million dollar aircraft behind in a life-saving ejection. Upon landing, he must guide his aircraft on a precise descent to safety. Too high, and he will be forced to plunge downward at the last moment, most likely snapping his landing gear. Too low, and he will hit the back end of the ship. Too far to the right, and he hits the control tower. Too far to the left, and a hundred million dollars worth of aircraft will go up in flames. Like all naval aviators, the men of Attack Squadron 34 face this challenge twice a day. But because they fly the all-weather A6 intruder, they are expected to carry out their mission even when massive waves come crashing over the 60-foot bow. Whether the sun is shining or the seas are storming, the intruder's mission goes on. All weather and night attack is the mission of the A-6, and has been for 30 years. In conditions that keep most airplanes grounded, the A-6 is in its element. The Naval Air Station at Oceana, near Virginia Beach, is the home of the Navy's attack wing for the eastern United States. In February 1963, the training squadron VA-42 became the first Navy squadron to receive intruders. At the time, the plane brandished state-of-the-art electronics, representing the future of naval air warfare. However, that was over three decades ago. Now the rugged workhorse of the U.S. Navy faces the twilight of its service career. The fact that the intruder has lasted as long as it has is a surprise, even to those who flew it in its early stages. Although a lengthy service career may please designers by being a vindication of their ideas, for the top gun generation, being assigned to fly an old plane is not exactly flattering. Lieutenant Pete Rasnick explains, when I first started flying the A6, is about when Top Gun came out. And so when I got my wings, everybody wanted to be an F-14 pilot. Um, when I got here, I was, I have to admit, I was a little bit disappointed initially before I flew the airplane, because I saw these Tomcats taking off. Um, I quickly, though, changed my mind when I learned about the mission of the A6 uh, and, and learned about its capabilities. Uh, flying low level, all weather, night, uh, dropping uh, all different types of ordnance. I uh, quickly realized that uh, this was uh, the mission that I, I thought I was cut out to do. I was initially a little disappointed, but once I got here, saw the mission, saw what was involved, uh, you get a real hands-on, get to see your results right away, the bombs hit the target, what have you. I feel like I'm more a part of the crew, sitting side by side, I feel like we're more of a team in the aircraft. 
I'll never forget my first flight. It was a low-level flight, and it was a, a real rush. We took off and flew uh, for about 20 minutes at uh, around 500, 300 feet above the deck at uh, in excess of 400 knots, and it was just one of the neatest things that I had ever done. And I knew right away that that's what I wanted to do, was fly in an A6. Because intruder crews fly the ship's oldest plane, they often take occasion to teach the pilots of the newer aircraft not to complain. It's not uncommon to have other uh, aircraft types complaining about their old aircraft, especially the F-18 community. When we were on cruise, they were complaining about their old F-18s that were, you know, seven and eight years old. And I looked at them and just laughed because we were flying. Our newest planes were only seven and eight years old. So those guys, uh, they don't know what an old airplane is. We fly an old airplane. <laughs> the A-6 may be an old plane, but there are none who will question its effectiveness. In fact, 30 years after the first flight of the prototype, the venerable intruder was again flying into harm's way. On August 20th, 1990, Iraqi President Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait and declared it part of Iraq. What followed was the largest deployment of United States forces since the Vietnam War. Anticipating a further push into the oil-rich countries of the Arabian Peninsula, vast armies were gathering on the northern tier of Saudi Arabia. For the U.S. Navy, conflict in the Persian Gulf was nothing new. Throughout the long war between Iran and Iraq, U.S. naval forces were deployed to provide safe passage for oil tankers. Therefore, at the beginning of Desert Shield, much of the U.S. Navy was already poised to strike. As the January 15th deadline approached, most of the world waited in uncertainty. However, military leaders were fully aware of the strategy to be taken if Saddam did not withdraw from Kuwait. Massive and relentless airstrikes. For this policy of overwhelming the enemy with air power, the A-6 intruder was perfect. It carries a massive payload by any standard. In fact, it can carry more bombs than any other plane in the Navy. However, the intruder does not have the luxury of operating from vast runways as does the large Air Force bombers, but it must always return to its home at sea. When January 15th arrived with no sign of capitulation on the part of the Iraqi army, President George Bush wasted no time in making good on his promise. Airstrikes began immediately, and the intruders aboard the USS Roosevelt were among the first to be called into action. Intruder pilot Lieutenant Pete Rasnick flew in the early days of the war. It was a gorgeous day, morning, the sun had just come up. I uh, didn't see any type of uh, AAA uh, SAMs or anything. Got to our target, I, I, I remember rolling in on the target, and just thinking to myself, it just seems so benign. There's nothing out here. It's just like a training mission. We dropped their laser-guided bombs. I remember pulling off target, looking down to the left to see the bombs hit. I looked down, they hit the target. I looked back to the right, and a missile just streaked right up by us with a big contrail. And it's like my heart froze. I, I told my VN, I said, there are missiles in the air. Then I keyed the mic, and I tried to tell my wingman, who was now ahead of me, we had missiles in the air, but I remember my mouth was so dry, I couldn't really talk. But I got, got it out on the radio, we had missiles in the air. He's asking me where they are, I'm trying to explain to him where they are. By this time, three or four more had gone up really close to us, and all hell's breaking loose on the ground with AAA and stuff. I just remember, I didn't pull the throttles back until I was about 100% 